What is going on my dudes and dude at It's showing you last night Serpentarium. The topic for today, as you can see in the title and the thumbnail, is gonna be why variation and variety is important in the snake keeping hobby. So if you're new around here guys, make sure you subscribe. Um, videos daily at the moment. Uh, lots of uh, lots of different snakes in my collection. Any video you want to see, you just put it in the comments, and I'll um, I'll see what I can do. Uh, I'm very active in the uh, in the comment section. I always support, um, you know, and uh, and you know, sort of uh, want an active comment section if that makes any sense. So I do always encourage that. Um, like I say, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe um, and smash that notifications icon. If you like my videos or my content and you want to see more of me, um, but let's just get straight into it. So why variety is important in the hobby. Now, obviously this is going to be um, one of those topics where you, you, you either agree or you disagree. Um, obviously those are the only two categories, but it's important to me really, ver variety in the hobby. I, I really think is key. When I first got into the hobby, the only thing I cared about was Royal Pythons. And you see this a lot with uh, with newer keepers. Um, and so the people, a lot of the people, not everyone, but a lot of the people that keep Royals, they do not care about any other snake. They, they, they don't, they, you know, they're not interested. And I was sort of like that when I first got into the hobby. I'd sort of look down on anyone that, that kept anything that wasn't a royal. Um, that's nothing, I, you know, nothing to be proud of. I'm just, I'm just being truthful with you. Here. That, that is the attitude that I had when I was first in the hobby. And it's silly, really, because there's so many fantastic snakes out there that, you know, people aren't keeping anymore. And I think it's a real shame, to be honest. Um, like this Dumeril's boy here. You don't see these about much anymore. They used to be really popular before. And they make such amazing pet snakes. It is a real, real shame. That, you know, the like I had an absolute nightmare finding finding my pair of Dumerals. <sighs> um, they're an adult pair. You know, as you can see here, she's quite chunky and, and large. But I couldn't find them. I really, I had real trouble trying to find these guys. Um, and it's the same with a lot of my collection here. I, I couldn't find for love nor money. My Chinese beauties, I couldn't find at all. Um, for, for a good while, I was looking for months and months to find a pair of Chinese beauties. Or even just a single Chinese beauty. Um, rosy boas, I'm always looking for more rosies. Can't find hardly any of them. You know, so I think variety is is just really key, really, to um to the hobby. Um, keeping different bloodlines open for every single species, because at the end of the day, different snakes are suited to different people. So, like, you know, perhaps someone new into the hobby thinks, well, I don't want a royal. You know, I want, I want, say, a Japanese rat snake. I think they're really cool. I like the way they, um, the way they look, and uh, their sort of um, temperament and stuff. And they can't find them. And then what might happen then is they, they might just pack in the hobby, and that's that's no good. The more people we have in this hobby, the better. Um, obviously, I want everyone that's in the hobby to be really responsible, but. <coughs> You know, generally, the more people in the hobby, the better. Um, it just it just promotes us more. It um, obviously the, the bigger the hobby is, the more bloodlines of snakes we're gonna have, and stuff like that. So it's just really key for me, really, um, that we have the variety there to, to get more people into the hobby and to get people keeping things that the, that we don't see anymore. I'm only a youngster. Um, as you obviously know, there's this very limit. Uh, I've got very limited resources here, but I, I do try as much as possible to promote 
um, you know, keeping different species um, that you like. Right, if if you don't like Dumeral's boas or rosy boas or Chinese beauties, that's fine. That is completely fine. Keep what you want to keep. But I I always think you should try to have something a bit different and try to have that variation there. If you like your pituorphis species, then keep a lot of bull snakes and gophers or whatever you want. If you like um, I don't know bamboo rat snakes or mandarin rat snakes. Or, uh, you know, even something like, um, like a Kribo or anything like that, you know. Um, scrub pythons, Maclot pythons. You, you don't see many of those around. So I would definitely encourage people to keep them because the more people that keep them, um, the more the demand sort goes up and the easier it is then to, to get these snakes because people are going to breed them more. So it's sort of like a, a cycle really and obviously like um, the more um, the more demand there is initially the price is going to go up. But after a while then the price will come down because so many more people will be breeding them. So everyone like like right now what's happening with the Mexican black king snake. Before you used to build a gam at you know a penny a dozen. And now they're really, really expensive, but that price is going to drop massively soon because a lot of people are going to start breeding them. And I think that's great, really, because a new keeper could walk into a um, into a show or a shop or whatever and pick up then a Mexican black king snake, a snake perhaps they really, really like because they've seen it year on YouTube or all over Facebook or whatever. It's a really cool looking snake, and they can pick that up then for £30 and have an excellent beginner species of snake and you know that might spur them on then into the hobby and maybe they'll you know they'll, they'll get something else maybe they're going to be the next um you know make the next new equipment or whatever the case may be but the more people we've got in this hobby the better um it's better as well to fight sort of uh you know regulations and stuff that come in that try to stop us from keeping snakes so there's loads and loads of reason to um to you know have that variety there at the end of the day though guys right if you only like royals or whatever um then then, then only keep that don't keep uh, a species of snake just for the sake of it just because it's rare or whatever um you know you've you've got to enjoy the snake and actually um actually like working with them otherwise you, you you know it's pointless really um you just as well leave the hobby altogether but it's a bit of a catch-22 as well because how can you really know if you like keeping a snake or not before you've actually kept it that's that's where i found a lot in the past like um i had a blood python before and i ended up you know i did i did a lot of research um but I, I, I thought before I kept it, yeah, you know, this is going to be great. But then actually keeping that particular snake was a different story. I, I did not get on with it at all. Um, it used to strike at the side of the tank all the time. And I, I thought I was going to go in there one day and it would have broke its own neck. So that's why I ended up, up selling this. So it is a bit of a catch-22 um, with keeping sort of less common species. Because you've got to hunt them down a lot. And it is... It is really impossible to know whether you like keeping that species or not before you actually do go ahead and keep them. Um, if you um, don't like it at first, I would always recommend giving it a bit of time um, to really make sure that you do, you know, you do or you don't like keeping it before you decide to um, rehome it. And obviously, with rehoming it, make sure that you, you know, you rehoming it to a responsible keeper. And someone that's really going to look after that particular animal. Um, but yeah, as, as I say, like variety in the hobby is, is really key. Um, we're seeing a huge resurgence at the minute in rosy boas. These are species I've liked from, you know, early on in my hobby when I was just getting out of that um, Royals of King sort of uh, phase. And I've had massive trouble trying to get them. I've, I've, I've been trying to get them for you know a good good while now and I've only got four so you know 
it's um it's a bit of a nightmare but as time is going on more and more people seem to be working with them so that's awesome because i think you know rosy boas and stuff like that are fantastic beginner snakes and it'd be really great to see them more and more in the hobby then um so that's why i think variation is key guys because there's a lot of cool snakes out there that just aren't be ca being kept anymore um, and because of this whole royal boom that we've had we've lost a lot of fantastic bloodlines in a lot of different species of snakes um, we'll probably never get those particular bloodlines back but we can you know we can always rebuild and, and start anew and, and maybe get some um some newer bloodlines in that are just as good or maybe even better but it'll all take time um take years and years to rebuild back to the uh the variety of what we had before in the hobby so i hope you've uh you've enjoyed watching guys as always if you're new around you make sure you subscribe um <laughs> and just uh just peeling her off a little bit give her a bit of a hand yeah if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. Um, smash the uh, notifications icon. Destroy that like button. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.